Hey there, in this video I will cover ASTM standards, which are very important to understand if you are selling, manufacturing or importing products in the United States. All right, so we begin with the very basics. What are ASTM standards? Examples of ASTM standards. Are ASTM standards mandatory? And if so, what are the circumstances when these are made mandatory? CPSAA, that's a regulation in the US that applies to children's products. And I will explain how CPSAA relates in turn to ASTM standards and finally lab testing and why that is necessary. Well, let's begin with the very basics. So what are ASTM standards? Essentially, ASTM standards are technical and safety standards, blueprints, you can say, developed by American Society for Testing and Materials, or, or ASTM. Uh, an important thing to understand when it comes to ASTM standards that, is that these are very specific. They apply to, to specific products, not broad categories in most cases. Well, sometimes, like toys and so on, but very often we see ASTM standards that are highly specific to a certain type of product, such as this one, soft infant and toddler carriers. It's pretty clear. Clothing storage units. I don't know how many there are, but I my understanding is that there are thousands of, of ASTM standards. I never tried counting, but these are just, just um, a fraction of, of, of the ASTM standards that, that are in existence. Now, when, when, when do you need to be concerned about ASDM standards? It's, it's a pretty complex question, and it's, it's not something that can always be answered uh, in, 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 in terms of regulations. It's not always you will have a definitive answer saying, is it mandatory or is it voluntary? And does that mean that I can just forget about it? But let's begin with mandatory ASDM standards, and what an Ma what a mandatory ASTM standard is essentially is an ASTM standard that is somehow incorporated, a reference mention, implemented as part of a regulation that in turn makes it mandatory. But standards in general, and that can be confusing, you go to a consultant, you go to a lab and you ask, hey, is this standard mandatory? No, standards are voluntary. That's, that's the point of standards. Well, yeah, sometimes, well, often, that's often the case. But if a ASTM standard is referenced and it's made mandatory, not by itself, perhaps, but as a result of the regulation. And CPSAA, the Consumer Product Safety Initiative Act in 2008, which applies to all children's products in the US, as far as I know, at least from um, newborns up to 12 year olds, references ASTM F963. 17 was incorporated it's, it's it's made mandatory okay so i'm not sure if that's the only one and, and keep in mind it's not astm standards not the only requirements of cpsa but it's one of them anyway now what what this means is that if i'm importing a toy or other children's product to the united states or manufacturing for that matter then I need to identify the relevant ASTM standard, which could be ASTM F963 if it concerns toys, but it could be another one too. What do we need to do with these standards? Well, when it comes to the, the core requirements, I need to arrange lab testing. Okay, so I need to verify that I need to have a third party, an outside party, examine my product and verify that my product is compliant. Okay. That can mean many things when it comes to, uh, to ASTM F963. Well, that would involve chemical testing, heavy metals testing, flammability testing. It also includes small parts testing. What else? Um, sharp points, other mechanical, electrical safety, um, battery safety, stuff like that. So it's, it's very wide in scope and, and each ASTM standard is, is different, okay? So they cover different aspects of, of product safety, you can say. But anyway, within CPSIA, I need to 
I need to arrange lab testing with a CPSC accepted testing company, and they need to test my product according to the relevant ASTM standard, such as this one. And I then obtain a test report with a test result stating if my product is compliant. And you should also go to the point where it states what aspects of the standard and what test methods have been applied, which in turn is referenced. But if you're a brand, if you're, then you generally speaking don't have to be concerned with, with that level of detail. That is something that the lab will usually take care for you, take, take care of for you. They will, they will deal with that. Okay. And another thing you need to do within the scope of CPSIA is that you need to reference, you need to mention the ASTM standard standards could be more than one, right? To which your product is compliant and tested. So this must be stated. You must issue this certificate where this is stated. And again, it could be more than one. Now, there's also something that is outside the scope of CPSIA that you as a brand owner, as an importer, as a manufacturer have to take into consideration. You should never wait until you should never, how should I put it? Um, you shouldn't start thinking about which ASTM standards apply at the time that you are ready to book testing, because at that time you likely already have prototypes. You, you may even have a mass produced batch of products. Now you need to make this assessment very early in the process at the, the drawing board at the design stage, really, because I have read ASTM F96317 in its full. I've read it, all of it. Um, wasn't on a Friday night to tell you that much, but, um, my line of work, you, you need to understand some of these things, right? And it is very detailed when it comes to the way that you need to adjust the design of a toy, of a sharp point of a battery hatch, stuff like that to ensure that it's safe. So you need to re you need to, you need to look at these standards. It could, again, you know, it, this is just one of them, right? Uh, specific for toys in this case, but you need to look at the ASTM standards that apply to the product and incorporate the elements of that um, to design your product for compliance. So it shouldn't be an afterthought. That's what I want to say. It shouldn't be something that, oh yeah, you know, we need to, we need to get it tested. It's, it's ASTM standards are so much more than just getting through the, the lab test, if you know what I mean. Okay, not a big question. So now I have established what, what it means when an ASTM standard is, is made mandatory, okay? But what about the scenario that is often far more common that there is no mandatory ASTM standard for your product? What do you do in that case? Do you just ignore? No, it's, it's not that simple. So the question is, can I ignore voluntary ASTM standards? And while the standard in itself is not mandatory in this case, doing so would still be very risky for, for your business, but also for your consumers. Keep in mind that unsafe products can still be subject to a recall and you could also face action fines and, and consumers could take action against you and so on. And you certainly want to avoid that. And, and that is another reason many retailers and also Amazon, they, they require compliance with voluntary standards. So why is that? Why, why, why are they not all made mandatory? Well, let's just go back one step. Why should you bother with voluntary ASTM standards? Well, it's a pretty clear answer. Ultimately, all consumer products must be safe. Everyone, every individual, every parent should be able to go to the store and buy a product and under reasonable use, this product should be safe. What ASTM does is that ASTM standards, they give you a blueprint. They give you one way that you can then design your product for compliance. Okay. It gives you that roadmap and some brands, they, they have a better way often when they want to go above and beyond the ASTM requirements that they, they feel that, oh, well, we want to, we want to go beyond that. And many brands these days, they actually do that. But let's say you're a small importer, small scale manufacturer, then skipping out on ASTM compliance, just because there's no mandatory standards is, is, is very risky. Safety must always be something to take into consideration because in the end, if something goes wrong, 
you're going to be in, in trouble. That's, that's just how it is. Not to mention opportunities that, that you will lose. So if it was me, I would definitely take voluntary standards into consideration. If I was, if I was uh, trading a product that uh, was not subject to any, any mandatory ASTM standards. So yeah, one reason that um, voluntary standards, including those from ASTM, it's not just for ASTM though, are very important. And one of my coworkers, John Kitani here in Hong Kong, he actually recorded a video um, like a month back or something, early September, about uh, um, um, the reason that voluntary standards exist and, and the consequences of, well, the potential consequences of ignoring those. So I suggest you watch that video too, if you're interested in that topic. All right, let's move on. Hope I convey the message. So lab testing. So lab testing I already touched upon that, but essentially lab testing is is needed to verify compliance with the ASTM standard in in in, in question. And ASTM testing services are offered by many companies, Kima, Intertech, STS, and many others. And they often they often cover both mandatory and voluntary. Another little tip just before we are ending before I end this video is that. If you're not certain about which ASTM standards apply to your product, and that can be really tricky, like how do you how do you figure that out? You could go to the ASTM website and just type in your product name, but it's not always easy um, for a layman, at least, to to determine that. But ask a lab, ask a lab like Intertech with Kima for a quote, and in in many cases they will then suggest. I mean, it's not like they are going to be held liable for it, but they can give you a pretty detailed. Uh, recommendation for these are the ASTM standards that we think apply to the product. That's like, it's a good start anyway. You can also hire a consultant. That's another option. All right. Um, hope I didn't make you more confused than when you started watching this video. There's a lot to take into consideration when it comes to ASTM standards. I guess it, it's not uh, always that easy to, to get your head around this the very first time. So if you still have questions, uh, which I perfectly understand if you do, then you can write a comment on YouTube or you can do the same thing on Compliance Gate. And uh, I would also recommend that you subscribe. Thank you.